Hello everybody, welcome to our special uh, live stream. So it's really nice to see you. Uh, for all of you guys that just joined in, uh, my name is Michael and I'm teacher for Viz Academy. Uh, Viz Academy is a an, uh, re 3D rendering school that will teach you how to become professional in just seven weeks. And I can see that there's a quite a nice audience right now. So welcome everybody, really nice to see you. Um, so uh, we're going to see our students in our uh, chat as well so it's really nice to see you guys uh, so Stas, um, Isaac, Boris, Frida, Wilson and obviously Rebecca and GP uh, so really nice to see you guys um, those of you that just joined in uh, let me know who uh, where you're from and uh, well, I would love to see uh, or hear really uh, a little bit of your story with uh, stories with 3ds Max. So today's topic is going to be just as you would imagine it. We're going to be talking about Corona Pattern. So Corona Pattern is one of those tools that a lot of people don't know how powerful it really is. Um, we result, uh, resort to using well different types of um, uh, solutions, uh, often not really optimized for bigger picture. Uh, so in this case, we're going to make sure that uh, we uh, will be uh, working in the most efficient and most intelligent way. And uh, we're going to be mostly highlighting a scene by Yuki. Uh, that's one of our students so thank you very much for sending this scene uh, to us but we're also going to be talking about Alexandra's work uh, so um, without any further ado uh, let's just uh, see where do we really could use our corona pattern so whenever you have any kind of object that's going to be seemingly a little bit uh, let's say repetitive so for example ceiling like this or this beautiful wall even bricks if you're going to make it uh, well well enough your floor patterns and obviously any kind of repetitive elements so we're going to try to talk um, we're going to guide you uh, through some of those examples and we can also see one one of images that uh, was created by our former students um, or let's say student that already finished this academy so this uh, work is by Panagiotis and uh, we can also see that there's a lot of repetition but at that time we weren't able to even use Corona pattern because that wasn't really yet a thing uh, so we're obviously going to try to use it whenever we can for any repetition and yes you can also use it as as, let's say a quick solution for your grass especially for interiors which is going to be amazing to substitute it for a lot of objects not all images are going to benefit from it not everything can be done with this um, beautiful tool but for example any kind of uh, any kind of uh, pattern any kind of mesh any kind of object that's going to be highly repetitive uh, so how much um Oh, okay, so uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about our offer, I would uh, recommend you to visit Viz Academy website where you can just quickly calculate all the costs and everything that's going to um, be related to that. In just seven weeks, we're going to be able to teach you how to do um, quite a, an extraordinary 3D. Our students are already quite advanced uh, when it comes to modeling right now, so uh, we're going to be adding a few objects into our scenes so I may be able to even highlight a few uh, images created by our students in a second also make sure to visit our Instagram which is going to be something that you probably love so about the corona pattern uh, you can see that a lot of objects will have more organic uh, structure where not necessarily all solutions will be that easy and creating or designing some kind of displacement textures might not be that easy by the way this this is also Yuki's work, uh, so uh, thank you very much. You can follow him on Instagram if you like to. Uh, remember that all of our students are well uh, worth it, so also make sure to visit their profiles. So any kind of pattern, right? So how about we actually talk about uh, this marvelous uh, tool? So first thing first, let's just talk about the 
basics of its UI and how to use it, when to use it. Uh, so uh, will you show how to create textures in Substance Painter and PBR materials and how to use it, them in 3ds Max um, with Corona? I think that we might uh, go for it at some point because why not? But today's topic is going to be mostly about Corona pattern. So uh, I'm going to write down that uh, a nice um, that nice suggestion. So let's just go for that and let's go. Mike, could you take my kidney for, um, I think that, uh, we cannot accept that kind of, uh, <laughs> currency, but let's just talk about our, uh, pattern. So, uh, how do we find it? First of all, it can be added to any object, any structural object. So pretty much editable poly, editable mesh, or just any geometry. So what do we do with it? First of all, we need to find it on a drop down list where it's going to be residing in this very nice area called Corona modifiers. There's a lot of very nice Corona modifiers that we can go through if you want to at some point, but Corona pattern modifier is here. So Corona pattern modifier is very dear to my heart because uh, billion years ago when Corona was still in an alpha stage. This was literally my first request that I gave uh, to uh, the, the um, let's say development team. I'm not suggesting that they listen to me. Um, I'm just uh, saying that this was my suggestion that uh, literally my first post on their forums asking if they can make something like this. And finally, they did after billions of years. So I'm super happy because it speeds up my work a lot. Uh, so first, uh, first of all, Corona pattern is a modifier. Once you add it to your object, you're going to see it at the top of the list. So it's going to be pretty easy to spot. You want to place it at the top of our hierarchy because it pretty much overrides uh, whatever it needs to override some of the elements. Uh, hello, Rayani. Hello. Nice to see you. Uh, let's see uh, if we can continue. Uh, so guys, um, by the way, uh, I will be showing you many examples where I would, would be uh, utilizing Corona pattern. But if you can think of anything else or any good ideas uh, where uh, patterns uh, will be occurring and Corona pattern can be useful, please let me know in our chat. It's going to be quite fun to test if it works. Uh, so First thing, we've got the node. Node is going to be pretty much the object which we will be using as our pattern. So you want to create some object that's going to allow that pattern to form. So in this case, I've created this very small um, package of lawn or let's say some kind of hair uh, using a, a regular hair modifier. But here we're going to be able to just uh, quickly click on the node and it appears that it already works. But you can see that its bounding box is quite a lot, uh, well, outside what I'm going to need, because we're going to try to render this out and see how it really looks like. So it's going to be uh, quite a nice thing. But you can see that not everything is perfect. We can see that some uh, spatial problems uh, occur and we want to fix this. We want to make sure that this is not going to be a reoccurring theme in our case. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to go to our randomization and tiling. First of all, uh, you can see that the tiling in UV space because Corona pattern is going to be highly related to your mapping. So you can just use um, regular UVW map and set it to box most of the time it's going to be really nice and I'm going to prove it to you in a second. So let's go um, and change this from uh, 20 by something to just one. Uh, so this is going to be a huge afro on <laughs> this uh, nice hat, but I don't think it's uh, what we needed. So this is how fast it reacts and it has al almost no impact on your RAM, which is quite cool. So let's go for something like uh, eight by eight. So we're going to have a little bit more consistent um, object and a little bit more consistent mapping. But again, we've got those distances. And mostly because as I, I mentioned at the very beginning, the crop box size is already too big. Uh, so that's because the uh, hair strands are standing uh, poking out of this, uh, let's say pattern. So we want to lower it. For, for example, in my case, I'm going to go for 
14 by 14 so it's very simple and now we can see that there's no distances in between but what's going to be a reoccurring thing a theme again is pattern and uh, okay patterns are literally what the name suggests but we can randomize them by going a little bit lower in the uv space we can also add a little bit of randomization so just like corona uvw randomization we're going to go from zero to one from zero to one and we want to go at 360 so this is going to be the most powerful part because now we just made it so randomized that it's literally going to look like uh, it's just a nice hut. Uh, so depending on to which angle we're going to be looking at it, it's going to have a uh, look a little bit differently because this is how uh, well it um, uh, reacts. So those are not just some kind of displacement maps. Those are individual hair strands that are being, um, let's say, cramped into this object. And I absolutely love it because I was working on a very similar project or let's say a hut that had a very similar um, uh, let's say uh, roof and in this case I must say that doing this using uh, just regular hair strands and scatters was a nightmare I hated it and this tool would be such a great uh, speed up of work for me uh, so this is um, pretty much how we can use it uh, so the whole UI of the modifier is very simple so we've got render settings uh, which will be helpful for material setup so we've got ID mode uh, so pattern object or base object so it's pretty much going to um, read the ID so me mesh ID of the object just so the right mesh is added also we've got uh, the UV mode that's literally going to be which UVW object we are, um, which UV we're going to be using for the mapping of our scattered thingies. So I think that this was quite a simple solution. We can also use this for carpets, very, very powerful carpets, uh, because displacement is going to be a bit more, I would say at this point, boring. Uh, we can use this for uh, lawns if we want to and it just works so i love it um, and that's pretty much going to be awesome but we can also do a little bit of a trickery uh, using different method or uh, using this to our advantage differently uh, so let's imagine that you want to create those industrial pipes uh, so in most of the cases uh, the way you would be doing it and this is the way i also suggested my students to work with uh, this um, type of object is to create a standard primitive go for a cylinder then once you've got the cylinder go to some uh, extras in splines uh, then we're going to go for helix and we create the helix so it wraps around this object but again it typically was not that good because in some cases you needed more wraps and once you collapse this to editable poly it doesn't do, or look that good uh, turbo smooth doesn't help and yeah it, it it was good it was really something i recommend using but we've got a better version uh, so let's go for simple line let's create a line just throw it like this regardless you're going to lay your pipes on your own so uh, you're definitely going to know where to place them when you need them but now I'm going to add a little bit of zigzag so it's going to be harder for uh, the, the software to really uh, recognize this and now we're going to just try to go enable in viewport and make it as big or as uh, wide as we want and uh, at this point we're going to try to uh, turn off the cap and so that way we don't have the closure on it and we're going to try to add a corona pattern so again this is going to be super fast and super easy because now the corona pattern that we're going to be using is going to be based on this very simple object you can see that it's a literal a plane with a line on it uh, so it's uh, going to um, and if you want to I can show you how to build this real quick uh, but uh, I don't think it's going to be necessary uh, are there any circumstances where you would use corona pattern instead of chaos scatter for like grass or anything yes many and I want to go through this because uh, this is uh, thank you for that question Rebecca uh, so in this case uh, for example just a second ago um, 
in our hut, so if we want to add the roof, I would normally scatter all the, um, let's say, hair strands uh, instead of using just regular, um, regular hair and for modifier because I literally hate that modifier. So uh, here we can see that, um, okay, my pipe is not rendering. Why? Because we still need to make sure that everything is um, properly aligned. So in this case, I'm going to make sure that my box is there. So it is. Uh, in this case, uh, it appears like my mapping is not entirely correct. And it seems like I need to turn off the randomization. Okay, so why doesn't it render? It's a very simple um, um, solution. First of all, this is still object that is a line. So if it's just a line and we add it to it, so it's not going to work. We have to convert it to editable uh, poly or some kind of mesh object. So this is something that you have to pay attention to because a lot of times you're going to run into this issue where it just simply doesn't render. And now I'm being a little bit, uh, okay, so this is very peculiar. So um, why does it render? Uh, offset, one to one, tiling, okay, uh, everything is fine. Did I click on uh, the, no, I didn't. Uh, one second, I forgot about one super important ingredient that's probably going to cost me a few seconds. So what we really need to also do whenever we uh, click on a line is generate mapping coordinates. That's one of the elements that I absolutely forgot about. Um, just one of those things you do during the live streams, right? So now we're going to convert this to editable poly and apply our uh, line. So let's go for this coordinate pattern. And finally, it's there. So um, we can literally add any kind of pattern to any kind of object as long as we've got the right mapping. Okay, this doesn't look that good. So let's make it a little bit more interesting. So tiling, I want to change it to two. So we're now going to have two lines. Also, if I'm going to change the V tiling to something around 15. Um, okay, it, the pattern doesn't. Okay, where's the Oh, randomization, right. Randomization is not the thing I want to go for. And here you can see that we've got perfectly aligned elements. Why is it that janky? Why does it have so many, uh, let's say, breaking points? The reason for it is the inconsistency of the model. If I'm going to increase its, uh, let's say, um, um, number of iterations, you can see that it now reacts the proper way. So we're going to have to have nice and smooth objects in order to use this beautiful modifier. So whenever we have pipes like those, we can just turn on our modifier and just fire it away. And we've got perfect pipes for our interiors. But let's actually go to the interior that we were supposed to talk about. First, it's going to be Alexandra's. Uh, work. So Alexandra finished our uh, training and uh, she was able to create this interior um, uh, on a span of our training. So again, it's just something that you have to uh, test on uh, test yourself. So another very nice example if is those um, patterns and plasters uh, in uh, Ola. <laughs> Hello. Um, so uh, it's Enrica, right? Uh, so um, in this case, we can see that if we try to scatter this out, if we try to apply this on any kind of copy paste basis, even using array modifier, it is going to cost us a huge amount of RAM and also amount of polygons because we're reaching 1 million polygons and imagine copying this billions of times. So instead, what we can do is just select, create a ring around our wall map it using the most primitive possible mapping. So it's going to be our UVW map and set it to box. And now if I'm going to just uh, start rendering, you're going to notice quick changes. So let's apply this modifier, but I want to turn it off so we can see how well it really performs. So now let's just start rendering. And uh, by looking at this image, you can see that it's missing some details at the top. And if I'm now going to turn off this, uh, turn on this modifier, it has it. And uh, the thing is that this is geometry and it reacts super fast with almost no cost to your RAM. So again, it's just going to be convenient to use. But if, uh, for example, you want to add more details, again, we can just go for this pipe, which is already pre-mapped and we can just take our nice pattern 
and apply it here. So it's going to be just perfect. But if you want to be more adventurous, you can also add the same modifier. And look at that. It also works because it's, it's just... Uh, how it's uh, going to uh, perform and uh, looking at this pipe alone you can really uh, tell that it's something amazing uh, okay and now we're going to try to move back one step and just zoom in on this object so it's going to be easier for us to see everything in the right lighting uh, so not only it reacts to geometry and mapping, but also it allows you to uh, create very specific elements in your case. Okay, so it, there's a little bit of mapping bug actually. So maybe it also requires uh, me to go a little bit slimmer on my um, um, crop box, but you can see how well it works. It's on a pipe and this adding such uh, displacement map will be very hard. And I absolutely love it. Uh, so thank you, Alexandra, for sending this scene in. And finally, let's go to Yuki's scene where we can talk a little bit about um, uh, his work. So first of all, I would like to again thank Yuki for uploading this scene and sending it to us. It's just amazing. It works great. And uh, once again, it's just amazing. And look at this. We have this very small object. And how do we do it? We just create a line and we copy it a bunch of times. Once it's there, we're going to, um, let's say, delete half of it. And that way, it's just this simple. And this pattern is going to be enough to, well, create something that's going to fill half of this beautiful scene. So all of this area on the right is... Um, could be, uh, let's say, uh, filled with just displacement and opacity map, but it wouldn't be this detailed and it wouldn't be that great. I mean, it would probably look good, great because Yuki was making it, but it, yeah, this is better. Uh, so the point uh, I'm trying to really uh, give you, or let's say, uh, convey is uh, we can zoom in and it's going to be pure geometry. Uh, so that's great because if we want to do close-ups if we want to do some uh, extra shots for our client now the texture resolution won't be a problem it's only about the detail that we've added to the model itself and you can see that it all just looks great kind of artsy to me uh, so this is going to be well one of the best tools i can really think of right now in corona that was recently added uh, so probably they will blow our minds uh, quite soon uh, with something new but I would like to also go over one more element. So I hope that Yuki won't um, really uh, be bothered with uh, the fact that I've changed, uh, changed something in his scene. But we had a lot of requests during our... Uh, um, during our... Um, how to say this, lectures. Uh, so during our classes, my students asked me how to do uh, some specific bricks, how to create uh, some kind of planks, and also how to create this very specific and quite popular recently type of glass. Yes, you guessed it, we're going to be using Corona Pattern. Why? Because it's fast, it uh, eats no RAM, and it gives us the most perfect possible um, effect that we can imagine. You're going to be able to change anything about the material, you're going to be able to change anything about the shape, and you can add the wobbliness if you need to, but you don't have to. And I think that this is one of the best possible use cases whenever it comes to Corona Pattern. Uh, you want to have full control over your objects, just adding simple displacement. And you may remember our kitchen video. I would really love to update it at some point with all of those new tools because they're better. We've got better solutions now and using them is just something that, uh, well, if you're, if you're not doing it, you're probably uh, missing out. And look, this is the object that I'm using to scatter or let's say use with our Corona pattern. It's the most simplest half cylinder that you can imagine. It's just that. And it's enough for us to create a nice pattern on our glass. But some of you may think or may say, um, yeah, great, Mike, but what type of control do I have over this? 
full control. Uh, so we can decide um, the density uh, of those objects. We can uh, decide what kind of size we're going to be working with just by either manipulating our main object or just manipulating our stats in UV space. So right now we're going to probably see one huge uh, uh, glass element, uh, but it's still going to be quite nice because you know of those uh, very hard to do um, looks uh, glass, um, which are really hard. Uh, so if you would be doing them by copying or even scattering them, it would take us a while. And here you can see that it's absolutely just a piece of cake. What's the X for modifier that's on the glass object? Thank you for the question, Stas. Uh, so uh, Stas is actually my student. So uh, we're going to jump to this question real quick. So uh, whenever you use any kind of um, manipulation on your objects, so for example, you're going to be using a box and uh, we're going to, let's say, um, rotate it a little bit and scale it. Whenever we use it with some modifiers, we're going to see a very, uh, let's say, strange behavior. Let's create this um, with one, uh, let's go for 100 by 100 by 100 segments. Let's go for 15 by 15 by 15. So this is our object, right? And it's, um, let's say it's, uh, it's base. So now I'm going to create the same box, but with the size of one by one by one. And we want to scale it so it's going to be just as big as its, uh, uh, well, let's say older brother. So if I'm going to add a modifier or I try to scale, uh, sorry, uh, scatter this object using uh, Corona Scatter or any other solutions, any values I'm going to be adding to the original are going to be calculated the way I want them. So you can see that this object reacts exactly to 15 centimeters and that's cool because it just works. If I'm going to add a shell modifier on top of it and add five centimeters to the shell, it will be five centimeters. But if the object is going to be scaled 10,000%, it is going to be reacting like it would be 100%. So if I'm going to add the noise modifier, 15 by 15 by 15, is going to have a little bit different effect. Also, I need to change. Oh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, 10,000 times bigger value than 15 is applied to this object because it's rescaled. But now if I'm going to delete this modifier and go to utilities, click on reset X form and reset it, you can see that now it is going to be changed to 100%. So what it means, it really creates a new keystone or let's say checkpoint for this object to let's say call it 100% with its current state. So if I go back and re-add the noise modifier, we can also collapse this object if we want to, to editable poly, this is typical. So don't worry about it. The modifier doesn't have to be applied because it was already applied and reset, uh, did reset everything about this object. So now if I'm going to go by 15 by 15, it is going to have exactly the same effect as expected. So resetting our X form is going to be super important in most of the cases. Um, funnily enough, it's, it doesn't have any effect on our um, Corona pattern because it's going to wrap around this object's uh, bounding box anyway. So it's in most of the cases not going to have such a great impact. So even if I rescale this uh, by 10 times, it is going to just wrap around this object. So we're not going to be using this huge rod to scale it, uh, scale it out, sorry, uh, pattern it out because it is going to be something that uh, you will be uh, probably um, lucky enough to not have a problem with. Thank you for the question. What do you mean it's, um, it is not, uh, what do you mean it does not eat a lot of a lot of RAM? Okay, thank you for that question as well. Uh, so in this case, if, for example, we try to start our interactive render, right, uh, we're going to be able to see this by clicking um, Windows X, let's go for um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Task Manager. And in Task Manager, I'm going to try uh, to go to performance real quick. And here you can see the amount of memory I'm using for four instances of 3ds Max open. And you can see that I'm flatlining on the usage of RAM. 
But if I'm going to turn on my modifier, so this is the modifier here, and let's just try to turn it on. You can see that it barely moved and we're, we're scattering quite a heavy object while rendering. So it means that um, whenever we will be using our um, Corona pattern on a bigger scale with more objects, it is not going to uh, create instances of those objects in your RAM clogging it. And a lot of times when scattering, this is exactly what happens. So the scatter is just creating instances, which is going to cost you a lot. So if your computer has approximately 16 gigabytes of RAM, um, creating a larger, um, let's say lawn, um, okay, lawns should be done with scatters for the most part. Uh, but if we're going to be creating some uh, kind of scatters inside of our interiors, that might be really catastrophic because it's going to slow down your performance. Uh, so yes, that's what I would be going for. Uh, so, okay. Um, I think that um, this pretty much sums up everything I wanted to say. Uh, so right now, I just need to make sure that render is uh, going to be a nice um, doggo because yes, my dog's name is Render and he's messing with something around my lamps. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, our students work and where do we... Uh, I actually hate Chaos Scatter. I cannot say... Um, I cannot really say the same because it's... Um, it's a very nice alternative to any other solutions out there. Uh, but uh, in most of the cases, when you want to go for, let's say, solutions like Forest Pack, you're going to have to, well, pony up uh, quite a lot of uh, money. And Corona, thanks to quite uh, amazing, um, uh, I would say, pricing and, uh, well, a lot of very useful uh, systems, like, for example, a student's license, uh, is more affordable. So uh, here we can also see that, uh, uh, let's say, in cases like this roof, Corona pattern would be just perfect. When it comes to details on uh, blankets or any kind of pillows, uh, if you want to add those very nice wrinkles, Corona pattern is going to be amazing. Or again, ceilings, walls, or decors, perfect. You can even substitute it in some cases for bricks. This is not the case, but it would really work. And one case that I really love using um, Corona pattern for is something like this, where you have uh, one of those, uh, let's say, very organic forms that you want to put all of your um, let's say tiles, bricks, whatever that's going to be in some kind of order. But it's going to be hard to bend your floor generator. Sometimes if just changing anything about it is going to be quite a mess up. And floor generator typically, well, likes to crash your, uh, your 3ds Max for no apparent reason. So um, this pretty much sums up everything I wanted to say about our um, our beautiful, uh, beautiful element, uh, or let's say tool, which is Corona Pattern. Can we use Corona Pattern on Corona Proxy models? That's another amazing uh, question. I don't think we can unless we change them into uh, back into mesh again. But I never, no, we should, we probably won't be able to use it on proxies because proxies won't accept most of the modifiers. Uh, so here we can see a few images created by our students. Again, it's Adrian, so uh, thank you and congratulations. Uh, we can create this carpet using nice Corona patterns. We can create ceilings, details, and anything made out of rattan, uh, woven, uh, anything goes. And if it, if it has a pattern, we're going to be able to create it. Yes, you could create just one window like that and pattern it out for the whole building. Yes, it works that way. Um, so that's quite amazing. By the way, this is a car's uh, 
a work, a congratulations. Uh, so this is all done during our training. So if you want to learn more about our Viz Academy school, make sure to go to Viz Academy Co UK. As you can see in our audience, there's a bunch of our students. So thank you for joining in. Uh, if you like this type of content, make sure to leave a like and make sure um, also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok. We upload quite a lot recently so we're looking forward to seeing you there as well let's make sure to reach 1000 likes before the next webinar so that way I'm going to be able to go through two or even more topics and also send us some of requests uh, so we will be able to also give you the topics that you would like to learn a little bit more about uh, so this is it for today thank you very much and see you next time bye bye